Farmers, along with everyone else, should get into the habit of recycling all their used oil, filters, and containers. According to Phil Rubleski, Executive Director of the Saskatchewan Association for Resource Recovery Corporation, better known as SARC. Every filter that you throw away also has oil in it if it's not properly recycled. For example, average filter has eight ounces of oil in it. And oil containers are not a hazardous waste, but they're kind of a nasty one if you burn them. One of the things that are done with it is they're just burned in burn barrels or dumped in a pile and burned. And of course, those are low temperature burning, so it puts all kinds of toxins into the air. Here we see an oil change at Marcus and New Holland, just outside of Regina. In addition to farmers, farm equipment dealers are also encouraged to recycle used oil, filters, and oil containers. This has become increasingly important now that many farmers are having more of their equipment serviced at their dealers. Agriculture dealers, when they do all their service, and they end up with large amounts of oil filters and containers. Now with farmers uh, leasing a lot of the equipment, companies have a program where they'll also look after the maintenance of the equipment. So then that when they come back in, their oil and their filters are taken off. All they have to do is, is call a collector that services the area. He's more than happy to pick up the oil because the, the larger the volumes, uh, the more willing they're to come and get it. For oil itself, the importance of recycling is quite simple. One single liter of used oil can contaminate one million liters of water. Rubleski says all different types of oil can be recycled together. What happens when a collector picks them up, you can have your engine oil, your transmission oil, gear oil, power steering fluid oil, any type of oil. It all goes into one big tank. And then when that's shipped off to a recycling facility, they simply take the impurities out and uh, clean up the oil and they make what's called base oil and they can then add their additive packages back in and just recycle it over and over again. This is one of the recycling facilities spread out across Saskatchewan. Smaller farmers, acreage owners and do-it-yourselfers are asked to drop off their used oil and materials at any one of dozens of designated eco-centers in the province but for larger farmers, it might be a good idea to store those materials in a large tank prior to calling a collector. Collectors like to have in the order of at least 100 gallons when they come to pick it up, even more than that if possible. Then a lot of the collectors will provide a 45-gallon drum so they can put their filters into it. Containers are a little bit more of a hassle. If they can uh, maybe have a 45-gallon drum and, and throw a plastic bag in and throw them into there, or sometimes the collectors will provide farmers with a, a bag as well to put their containers together. Rubleski says it's important to separate oil containers into two main groups, starting with the smaller containers, 10 liters and under, which is basically anything two and a half gallons or less. That's the blow mold material, not quite, quite as high a value. There's another product that's very high in value, which is the 20 liter pails. Uh, these are shipped like this, <clears throat> nested to the, uh, to the intermediate processor, and then they're also ground down as well. They're kept separate from that material because it's higher value, and they also sell it separately as a higher value product that goes back into injection grade materials. So you could also make pails out of it again as well. After growing up on a prairie farm, Rubleski is well aware of the value of used oil pails. He figures that's one of the main reasons why the overall oil container recycling rate is only about 50%. It's very understandable that farmers may want to use those 20 liter pails over and over again. We say that's fine, but once they do become broken or, or you can no longer use them for other uses, like storing nuts and bolts or doing whatever with them, we ask that you still return them for recycling. At this facility, the smaller containers are brought in and sent up a sorting conveyor to begin the recycling process. And it comes down into an intermediate storage area and then it's fed through uh, a shredder and once it's gone through the shredder it comes up this auger conveyor and then it goes right into the bin here. It's, it's oily material right now. Once this oil material is shipped off to another facility then it is granulated down to about three-eighths of an inch, run through a centrifuge so it takes all of the oil out of it and that material, about 1% oil, is shipped off to a processor. 
The processor will turn this material into plastic pellets, which can be used by manufacturers to make a wide variety of consumer products. They can go to make uh, lawn furniture, they can go to make irrigation pots. Uh, one of the main things they use for though is to go right back into oil containers again. A lot of the uh, large companies that sell oil in containers right now are using 25% post-consumer material in their containers, so you're getting a pretty good continuous loop with your oil containers. Oil filters are delivered to the processing facility in 45-gallon drums, which are placed on a cradle at the beginning of the recycling process. The cradle lifts them up and dumps them in the hopper. The hopper, again, is an intermediate storage area. Once uh, they're in there, this machine then densifies them. There's rams that come in from two directions and make them into a brick. And as you can see here, these bricks are very highly densified. They have all of the oil squeezed out of them. These bricks are transported up the conveyor and into nearby drums and then shipped off to a metal broker. Eventually, they will be combined with other recycled material by a processing facility. And they mix them in with a recipe in their big electric arc furnaces. They then make molten steel, which they then run and uh, form back into a very, very large uh, rectangular block. That rectangular block is then reheated and run back and forth along a large set of rollers until it's squashed down to make a, a thin plate steel. That thin plate steel can be used for manufacturing any agricultural equipment, or it's mostly used for making transmission pipe for natural gas and crude oil. The Saskatchewan Association for Resource Recovery Corporation was originally formed by the oil and filter industry to develop and operate this recycling program. The membership includes a number of large and well-known retailers. Walmart, Canadian Tire, our oil sellers are all the oil companies like Petro Canada, Shell, Imperial Oil. And we're also, a large part of our members are car companies, but we really have a lot of emphasis on the agricultural sector. Uh, all of the egg sellers are members of our association as well. SARC is funded by an environmental handling charge, also known as a checkoff. It's paid along with the purchase of oil filters and oil containers. The money keeps the recycling program going. We pay out uh, return incentives to the private sector recycling industry, go around and collect all this material. We also operate uh, 34 eco centers around the province, which are drop-off locations for people who want to drop off smaller amounts of material. And then we also run an extensive communication and promotion program. Rubleski says they emphasize the promotion of the program in order to maximize the percentage of used oil materials which are recycled. We have also now have an excellent website, usedoilrecycling.com. And now because farmers are so technologically advanced, and so many of them are doing a lot of their work while they're on the tractor, uh, we now have a mobile site. That is uh, usedoilrecyclingsask.com. In addition to Saskatchewan, there are also used oil materials recycling programs operating in Alberta and Manitoba and in many other provinces across Canada. The provincial groups work together through a Canada-wide organization known as the National Used Oil Material Advisory Council. We like to look upon ourselves as providing a, a harmonized program across the country. Most of about 80% 80, 80 of our members are common to all our associations. So if we can have uh, an approach that's similar in all provinces, it works better for our members and it works better for the public and it works better for the private sector recycling industry as well. As was mentioned earlier, a single liter of used oil can contaminate one million liters of water. Oil filters and containers can also damage the environment if they're in a landfill site or burned as they give off toxic fumes. For more information on the recycling of used oil along with the recycling of oil containers and oil filters in Canada, simply go to usedoilrecycling.com. That's usedoilrecycling.com.